and welcome to our morning service of worship. We're beginning a new series today as we think about life on the front line, about serving God, about living for him wherever we are, seven days a week. What we do really matters to God. And I'm going to read some verses that remind us of that and then pray before handing over to Ed and to Sophie. These verses come from Colossians chapter 3. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. We pray together. Lord, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise your name that you have called us to live for you in all the dimensions of our lives. Thank you for the amazing privilege this is. And Lord, as we worship you now with our lips and from our hearts, we pray that you would come to us and fill us with your life, fill us with your strength, that we might go at the end of this time ready to serve you wherever you have placed us. In Jesus' name, amen.
life to your blood. I surrender my name for your glory. I surrender my heart to your will. I surrender my dreams to the plans you have for me. Thank you for showing thought I would record today in the Headingley Cafe. We're thinking about our workplaces and this is somewhere where I spend some time pretty much every week. And yesterday I was here, the cafe was open, I had a time with Kate Burkett, our under fives worker, as we talked about Tots Cafe. I went next door, sat in on the Tots Cafe. I was able to have a work-related conversation with someone else. And so that is part of what I do during the week. Where are you during the week? Where do you spend your time? What is it that you do? And also, of course, we are living in strange times, and that is reflected here in the cafe as well. I'm here on my own, um, but just in case, I've got my visor, and I've got my mask, and I've got my hand sanitizer too. Daily work for you at the moment may be fraught with difficulties. It may be sitting in front of a computer screen and being on Zoom meetings all day long. It may be part-time because you've been furloughed. What we hope and pray for is that this series is going to equip people for life on the front line as it is right now. Whatever you do, it's important to God. We really want to affirm that as a church and to be encouraged and instructed through this series about how we can live for God better in our nine to five, our eight to six, whatever our working time might be. We're going to see a video now that introduces this series. And then following on from that, we have Hannah, in the All Age Talk, we have John and Anne Pelham who are leading prayers and Chris Dyson is going to bring a reading from God's Word. And later on in the service, Matt Wright is going to be introducing this series for us with the first message. But before we get to those things, let's watch the video together. Over a month, around 6% of the UK gather together to worship Jesus. It feels like we're too few to make a difference. But the reality is, Monday to Saturday, God has us. Scattered in the world, connecting to hundreds and thousands of people. So wherever you are. Whoever you are. Whatever you do. You can make all the difference in the world. And on Sundays, when we gather together, we strengthen and empower one another to be sent out again for life on our front lines. This week we're starting a new sermon series about how we can make a difference in our workplaces, in our universities or our schools. We're going to be learning about how as Christians we're called to gather together on Sundays as best as we can in this corona time and be encouraged and filled up so that when we scatter, when we move to other places, to our schools or wherever we are on a day-to-day -day basis, 
we can be empowering other people and living our lives for Jesus Monday through to Sunday. I'm excited because children and young people were not exempt from this. You guys have an awesome opportunity to be um, in your schools and um, living out for Jesus as well as those in workplaces too. I want to tell you a story this morning about a dolphin named Ripple. Ripple was a very, very positive dolphin. And when she arrived in her new pool, all she wanted to do was have fun and play. But when she got there, she realised and noticed that no one was having any fun whatsoever. This was because there was a mean and nasty shark called Snark. And he called all the shots. And he didn't let anyone have any fun whatsoever. It was completely miserable. At first, Snark made Ripple feel really negative and really sad but her trainer reminded her that she ripple has the opportunity to choose to be positive and to make a difference in her pool so she starts playing with the other animals they're having so much fun and splashing around and playing around and it's they're having a great time but this annoys snark the angry shark and he wants to know why they're having so much fun so Ripple challenges Snark and says, okay, let's have a staring contest. If I can make you smile or giggle, then we can continue having fun. But if I can't, then we'll stop having all this fun. So Snark agrees and they have this staring contest. They look into each other's eyes like this. And do you know what Ripple does? She starts to smile. And then it gets bigger and bigger. And as Ripple is smiling and Snark is staring at her, he can't help but start to smile and smile. And his smile gets bigger and bigger until they're both smiling and laughing. And so the rest of the pool all have lots of fun and play together. Ripple makes a big difference in her pool. And we have um, the opportunity to do the same in our schools and workplaces. Ripple was super, super positive, and that was exactly the right thing to do. In our la um, sometimes we need to be super positive, but also sometimes we need to be super understanding of how people are feeling, or um, and that might mean listening to them and trying to get onto their level and understanding where they are coming from rather than just telling them that everything will be all right. You see, what we carry with as Jesus followers is far better and far more exciting than some smiles and fun in a swimming pool. We carry the hope and the precious truth that Jesus is our saviour and he has forgiven us for all the bad things that we've ever done. I don't know about you, but knowing that gives me um, it makes me so excited. It makes me jump for joy and gives me an, a literal skip in my step. I don't know if you've ever seen me walking down the street, but I genuinely bounce as I walk. Um, this reminds me um, a bit like this video of some spring box in my favourite place in South Africa. No one knows exactly why the Springboks jump for joy, but they do, and there's, it's, you can't help but smile as you're watching them. We carry that same joy within us. Do you remember that illustration that Kate showed us last week? We have been wiped clean, and we're called to shine out, live in that understanding that we are free with Jesus. And we can do this by being a good friend to those around us. We know that bad things will happen, but we have the hope that God has rescued us and can bring, and we can bring that to those around us in our schools and our workplaces. So to finish, how are you going to bring that joy of the spring box or of Jesus into your day to day life 
this week.
Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come before you today humbled that you should have chosen us, gathered us together, set us apart to be your hands and feet, your voice, to bring your love to the world, to those we live and work among. We confess that often we find ourselves ill-equipped to deal with what life throws at us. But we know, Lord, that in your almighty power, you can give us the strength we need. We pray that in these difficult days and troubled times, you would help us to stay strong and faithful, to rely on you to bring your love and generosity to others. We pray for our leaders, those who are making life-changing decisions. Please give them your wisdom to choose wisely. For all those we know who are working on the front line, give them strength in all the stressful situations they face and protect them physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. We thank you that as people with a sure and certain hope, we can encourage others be generous in our giving, look beyond the difficulties of here and now, walk alongside people who are suffering through illness, loss of employment and worries about what the future will bring. Help us to be ready to listen to what you want to teach us and bring into whatever situation we may find ourselves in. We pray for ourselves too, as those who gather in your name, to seek and do your will. We pray especially that your Spirit will guide all of our thoughts as we prepare for our church meeting this coming Thursday, and that your hand will be on all that we do and say, especially with regard to any decisions we may be called upon to take. And so, Lord, as we come now to hear your word, May it speak to each one of us as your Spirit leads us. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible passage today is from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. The message paraphrase puts it like this. I, Peter, am an apostle on assignment by Jesus the Messiah, writing to exiles scattered to the four winds. Not one is missing, not one forgotten. God the Father has his eye on each one of you and has determined by the work of the Spirit to keep you obedient through the sacrifice of Jesus. May everything good from God be yours. Hi folks, um, I, I'd already recorded most of this talk and, and I'm doing it on my phone and then somebody rang me and that just ruined the whole video. So <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> Um, I am delighted to be launching this new sermon series. It's taken from the London Institute of Contemporary Christianity, otherwise known as LICC, or as I like to call them, LIC. It's about the fact that we all have a front line. And over the next five weeks, we're going to be exploring what this actually means. It really does have practical implications for each one of us. I'm grateful to Chris for having read from the message because it does give a really helpful, refreshing take on um, the verses from 1 Peter chapter 1 uh, verses 1 to 2. I have a question for you all. Why do you go to church or connect with church online? There are many views on why people go to church. It might be in their mind a social thing or um a thing where they go for support. It could be a duty or something they do out of guilt, which is obviously wrong, or, you know, shouldn't be the reason why we attend church or anything. But many views on what church is don't actually hit the mark. If we want to know what church really is, we need to go to the New Testament where the church began. And so when Peter writes his letter to small groups of Christians, who were scattered across ancient Turkey, he wants them to get what it means to be the church. He does it by helping them see themselves as part of the Old Testament people of God, and he uses two words and a stunning truth. 
And as uh, the next few minutes unfold, I hope to reveal to you what those things are. The first key word uh, that um, Peter uses, and admittedly this is not in the message version, but it's that the, the people he's writing to are God's elect. That's the first thing. The people are God's elect. God's purpose from Genesis chapter 12 onwards was that Abraham and his many descendants, Father Abraham had many sons, right? That they would be blessed and be a blessing in the world. Not all of the early Christians, you see, were Jewish by birth, just like many of us are not. But Peter draws them into the ongoing story of God's work in the world by using the language of calling. Whatever our journey to Jesus, when we surrender to his lordship, we become part of the people who are called, the people of God with a mission in the world. In the visual for this series, we can see dots. I'm hoping they might come up on the screen right now. There should be two squares next to one another with red and grey dots in both. The red dots represent the statistical fact that there are 6% um, of Christians in the UK who attend church. Let me rephrase that. There are around... 6% of people in the UK who worship in a Christian church and this is being generous because it's only once a month or um, or more. Now this fact was obviously pre-Covid and pre-lockdown so we could probably translate that as saying um, instead of people who gather in a church now it's people who connect online like we're doing right now. But it's very generous because it says once a month or more. It doesn't say once a week or once a fortnight. And nor does it say people who are Christians. There's a big difference between going to church or connecting with church and actually being a born again believer. Saved by grace through faith in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus and filled and indwelt by his Holy Spirit. There's a big difference between those two things. So we, we notice that the the six percent or thereabouts are the red dots. And so we are the red dots and the red dots on one side of our visual are gathered just like in church on a Sunday morning in normal time or when we connect like now. And on the other side, they are scattered. And the whole point of this sermon series is for us to realise that we we gather to scatter. We gather to be sent. We are blessed to be a blessing because we all have a front line where we serve Jesus on. And I'll say more about that as we go. And over the next few weeks, this will be unpacked in really practical and helpful ways for each one of us. So we the red dots, we um, we remind ourselves that we believe a particular story about the world, that God made it, that it was good, that we broke it through sin and that um, Jesus's death and resurrection makes new life possible. And one day he will have the final say. He is the last word and the world will be uh, renewed or remade as scripture tells us. Everything one day will be made right. It's important when we gather and connect that we strengthen and encourage one another because we are God's elect. We are God's chosen people, even though that first letter from 1 Peter wasn't addressed directly to us. So the people Peter was writing to, like us, are God's elect. But they, like us, are exiles. This is the second thing I'd like to draw out of this passage. The second term that Peter uses recalls the great uh, disaster of the Old Testament, that Israel lost their land and they hoped for a quick return, just like when a football team gets relegated. By the way, it took Aston Villa three seasons to get promoted back to the Premier League after relegation. 
Leeds United fans, how long did it take Leeds? I'm going to move on here. Um, but I am really happy to see Leeds and Villa back in the Premiership. Let me say that. The prophets told the Israelites that many of them would not return, but they did say that they could still be a blessing where they were. They could still be distinct as well. And this is true for us. Today we are scattered most of the time. Hopefully we don't spend all of our time surrounded by fellow Christians. For some of us we might need to be challenged on this. In heaven we will be surrounded by other Christians. According to Rick Warren, there are two things we can't do in heaven. One of them is evangelise, because everybody loves Jesus there. And the second thing is sin. I welcome any theories on any other things we won't be able to do in heaven, but they sound pretty good to me. It's worth noting that um, as believers, we may be the only disciples of Jesus in our homes, in our classes or in our workplaces. And these places are where we are called to shine. So it's really important, thinking back to the dots, that we, the red dots, don't grey out. We mustn't become like the culture surrounding us. If we don't get discipleship right, the culture we live in will try and disciple us with its billboards and adverts and temptations and all the many gods with a, a lowercase g that there are in the world, as opposed to the one God who we know in Jesus and are called to follow and model to the world around us. You may wonder why our situations are so different, but God has placed us in our scattered contexts. Frontline is a term used by LICC and by us over the next few weeks to describe these scattered contexts in which we find ourselves. Of course, frontline has all sorts of meaning. We've heard about frontline workers since the first lockdown, haven't we? But frontline uh, front lines are basically everyday places where we live, work, study or play, where we are likely to connect with others who are not yet Christians. We are the scattered people of God, just like the exiles Peter was writing to. We all have front lines, from the youngest of us to the oldest. And some of you might be sat in your front line right now. Please hear that all of us have a front line. Wherever God has called us to be, it could be the hobbies we enjoy, the streets we live in, as well as our workplaces, families, homes, classes, we all have a front line. So we are God's elect. We are exiles. And here's the stunning truth that Peter uh, revealed to the people he wrote to. And it's true for us as well. Peter finishes his opening greeting with a reminder of the absolutely amazing work of God in their lives. We've got Father, Son and Holy Spirit together in these two verses. God knows us. And it's really wonderful that we heard from the message because that tells us that God knows us, but it also says God hasn't forgotten us in our situations. He hasn't forgotten us and he hasn't forgotten the situations in which we find ourselves day by day. God has not forgotten you. He knows you and he loves you. Receive that today. Receive that truth. And better than that, we have been set apart by the Holy Spirit his sanctifying work in us as we become more like Jesus. It's the only way we can become more like Jesus is to open ourselves up to him, to choose to grow. We can be confident of our relationship with God. 
the sprinkling of blood that is me mentioned in the passage, it's not focused on in the message, but it's, it's alluded to. It's a sign of us being included in the new covenant. And it's all in the context of our being obedient to Jesus. Peter rejoices with his readers in all that God has done for them. And he reminds them and also us that we live out the implications of the gospel in our scattered places, on our front lines. We are elect. We are exiles. And this series will explore what it means for us wherever we are, whatever we do and whoever we are. No one is excluded from the wonderful message we're going to be hearing over the next few weeks. We are red dots when we gather to strengthen one another as distinct people. We are also red dots when we scatter to many different places with many different people. People like you and I who can make all the difference in the world as missional disciples. I'd like to recommend two takeaways that you can you can do something with after having heard this message. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Here's a couple of practical things you can do to help this um, message sink in, to help you live it out. The first one is, takeaway number one, Knowing that we are the scattered people of God who are strengthened when we gather together. Why not join a small group? We have many small groups across our church here in Leeds where you can make new friends, receive support, receive prayer and love where you can study God's word together and drill down deep into what that means for us today and grow together as a result of all those things. Small groups fit in really well with our vision and values and with our calling as Christians. And there are groups for children, for teenagers, and there are umpteen groups for adults. So wherever you live in Leeds, um, if transport is an issue, let us know in normal time, obviously, because at the moment we're connecting on Zoom. Um, but don't go without a small group if you believe God is nudging you to join one or if you would like to know more. If this is you, please simply email the address that's coming up on the screen for us somewhere round about now. Um, Simply email smallgroups at cbcl.org.uk if you would like to know more. And as an added incentive to joining a small group right now, an adult one at least, small groups are going to be studying some resources which accompany this wonderful series. So you can really get your teeth into it. Why not do that now? Why not email that address today? and look to join a small group soon, or at least dip your toe in the water with no obligation and see how God leads you. So that's the first takeaway, join a small group. And if you're already in one, why not thank God for the group you're in? Why not reconnect if you haven't been part of the group for a while? And the second takeaway is pray for God to lead you on your front line. Because you have one, my friends, you have one, so do I. You might have more than one. Why not think about what that is and ask God to lead you on it? Don't ask God to be with you because that's a waste of time. He already is with you everywhere you go. You could ask for a fresh infilling of his Holy Spirit to equip and empower you. That's never a bad thing to do. But like John Wesley said, best of all, God is with us. Be assured that he is with you, but do pray for God to lead you on the front line to which he calls you on a daily basis or throughout the week. Do pray. Do pray as you're asking for God to lead you that you will be more aware of 
his Holy Spirit working in your life. The presence and power of the Holy Spirit, enabling you to live for Jesus this week and beyond. That's a wonderful thing to pray for. We are elect, God's elect. We are exiles. And the, the, the wonderful truth is that we are not forgotten. We are known, loved and forgotten uh, and not forgotten <laughs> by God. <laughs> and the takeaways are um, join a small group or reconnect with the one you're already in. Now is an opportune time to do that. And the second thing, pray for God to lead you on your front line. You're going to have some stories to tell if you do this. May God bless us all and may he bless his word to us and to our lives as we enjoy this series and as we learn together to apply it to where he's called us to be. Thank you and God bless you.
Thank you so much to Matt. Thank you to everyone who has taken part in the service today. I believe this is going to be a great series that will really lift our eyes to Jesus and equip us for work in the everyday world, whatever that might mean for us. I'm going to read some verses from the book of Jude as a closing encouragement and as a blessing. Dear friends, 
by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore.